All right, in this lesson, we are going to focus on moment curvature relationships and boundary conditions and the um, aspects of how we can anticipate what the deflected shape might turn out to be for a beam responding to transverse loads. Right? When we take a look at these deflected uh, shapes that represent how the beam responds to the load, there are several things of crucial importance, one being the moment curvature relationship. That's of course m is equal to ei kappa, where kappa is that concave up or concave down. Now in the American Designer Sign Convention, of course, positive moment means smiley face up or concave up, and negative moment means frowny face or concave down, sometimes called hogging curvature, h-o-g-g-i-n-g. -G -G. Right? Boundary conditions need to be met as well as uh, continuity and compatibility, and we'll talk about those things here in just a second. Keep in mind, of course, that our overall model is that the second derivative of the curvature, EI kappa, which is second derivative of EI times, there we go, there's our curvature there, is equal to the distributed load. Now, if this function gets to be very difficult, then everything else here also gets to be difficult. But if we focus on these aspects, we can anticipate quite adequately what the deflected shape of the beam is going to look like. For instance, take a look at this very complicated loading scenario. Very simple beam. It's just a diving board here. But we have a di uniformly distributed load over a, only a small portion of the beam, a triangular distributed load over a small portion of the beam, an applied couple, an applied concentrated force out here at the end. The, uh, it is a statically determinate situation, so the shear diagram and the moment diagram that results are things that we can determine with some, some ease. But how do we go about finding the more precise nature of the deflected shape? Integrating this, this fourth order differential equation, is not going to be easy. If E and I are constant, then it does simplify a little bit, and we get the fourth derivative of the deflected shape times uh, EI is going to be equal to the distributed load function. Okay, fine, but again, integrating all of this stuff is not going to be pleasant at all. And we'll talk in just a second about what that might uh, look like in more detail. But let's look first at what we anticipate the deflected shape might turn out to be. We know from a boundary condition standpoint that at F and at C, there can be no transverse def uh, deflections or displacements. So let's just draw down here at the bottom those supports to emphasize here in this qualitative shape that we're about to draw the types of things that are going to happen. Right now, we can see from the moment diagram that we've got positive moment in this region that's concave up or smiley face there. And in this whole other region, we have concave down to go with the negative moment. Right now, the boundary conditions are such that again, no displacement transversely at the supports. And we have to somehow fit in these two curvatures. Right now, note this location right here of zero moment is an inflection point. That is not. That is not. V equal to zero. Right, just an inflection point. That means it's the transition in this case from concave down to concave up. Now, at that location here, at this inflection point, this is a continuous smooth beam. So the deflected shape must meet here continuity. And that means that theta to the left of the inflection point, that's the slope, has to equal theta to the right of the inflection point, as well as the transverse displacement, which is not 0, has to be equal on either side to each other. These are continuity conditions. That if we were going to integrate this, we'd also have to take account of in a variety of ways. But particularly, actually, that would refer to, to a slightly different aspect that we'll get into again in just a second. From a drawing standpoint, though, we have to have these kinds of continuity conditions. And what that says 
is that somehow we have to have, again, concave down over on this left portion. And I don't know if we have zero slope at the roller. There's nothing that says that we would, so I don't want to draw it that way. And we have to have concave up over in this other. Right now, note how I'm going to begin to fit this in here. Let's see. Number one, I'm going to draw where the inflection point is located. You know, mathematically, we can find out where that is through the shear in the moment diagram. Find out where that location is. I'm just going to draw that vertical line down to give me some sense of where that would be. And when I draw in the concave up portion, note I don't want to have it have negative slope that heads way down here. In fact, I need it to really shoot up above the support because I'm going to have to fit in a concave down portion in here somehow. Right? So, you know, maybe actually I could start on the other side. That would work too. And so there's a concave down throughout, and then I can come back around here. Then I need to get then something that's concave up. I need to match the displacement right at this transition point, the inflection point, and I have to match the slope, or what we call the theta, to make that nice and smooth. So these continuity conditions for the shape would have to be true right there, right? meet the slope, meet the transverse displacement, we met the curvature, and we've complied with the compatibility requirements that is that or rather the boundary conditions that right here we gotta have zero transverse displacement there. Well you know really that one right there is just a little tiny bit off. I've lifted off the drawing a little bit. That could be improved slightly. And you know it can sometimes be a little fussy to try to get all this in there. Looks like maybe I should have done it maybe just a little bit like that. That's just slightly better. It's still not perfect. All right. Now I don't know if this part here has so much curvature that it comes down or it goes up. I won't know that until I perform some calculations here. All right. um, but from a qualitative standpoint, this complies with all the requirements. Now one last part before we charge off into another numerical um, example, and that is, let's go back to this whole notion of of all of these pieces that have to get, uh, that go along here. And that is, alright, we've got EI is constant, so we've got the fourth derivative of the deflected shape times EI is going to be equal to the load. Now notice we've got one, two, three, four, five different segments just for defining the load. The support conditions happen to be at those specific uh, beginning and end or transition locations. So we end up with one, two, three, four, five regions to define Q of X. And that means that we're going to have to integrate this segmentally five different times. Ooh, that just is awful. Just really awful. Right? So for the shear alone, we'd have V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. And in some of those regions, we would have to figure out that okay for instance right here at B right at B V1 at B has to be equal to V2 at B how do I know that well because this applied couple doesn't change the shear at that location it does change the moment though by that location now at C of course there's a reaction there so at that location V2 at C is not going to be equal to V3 at C, and indeed it will differ by whatever that reaction value is. Right? So, yeah. And then over here at that region, we're going to have, well, there's no concentrated force there, so in the math, the continuity of shear would be, oops, it's 4D, that those two have to be equal to each other. And then the same thing is true here at E, that 
that one would have to be equal. These are all continuity conditions. Or you could, you could actually call them compatibility uh, conditions if you wanted to. All right, and so as we we're draw that, we've got the shape of that on the other side. The same thing is going to be true when you look at the moment, that right at this location, right, it'll change a little bit. The moment coming from B is not going to be equal on either side because of the applied couple, but at C they would because there's no applied couple there, and there's nothing inherently about the beam that would make that change. How do I know that? We'll draw the free body diagram to confirm that. and so on and so forth. So one, two, three, four conditions there along the way. You also have conditions at the ends to have to deal with. Same thing with the moments, right? Well, likewise now when we come along to do the slopes, right now you'd have to come along, you know, if EI varied, we'd have to first take the M moment and divide by EI in each segment, and then we'd have the curvature, and then we'd integrate, and so theta and 1 and B, in this case, would have to equal theta uh, in region 2 at B, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a little hard to keep. 2C would equal theta 3C, and so on and so forth all the way through. These would, these would truly be what we call continuity conditions. Continuity, typically, we think of in terms of uh, the displacements. Same thing's going to be true with the transverse displacement. We have no breaks in the beam. So, so on, so forth. All of this, man, that's a lot to have to deal with. But again, note, every time we have a change in the load, we have a change in the support condition, no matter what kind of load, concentrated force, concentrated couple, the beginning and ending of a distributed load, um, the external reactions that come in every single time we would have a new region that we're going to have to deal with either from a force standpoint or from a displacement standpoint we're going to pick up all these additional equations of compatibility and continuity this is not an easy one to deal with analytically and indeed there are some other approaches um, that we have adopted um, to do, handle that, and of course there's the computer approach which will handle all this with a lot more ease, and that's eventually what we'll be building up to.